In this video, let's learn about component state in React. As we have seen so far, every React component returns JSX which describes the user interface. And in the last video, we saw that it is possible to influence what is rendered on the screen using props. As it turns out, there is a second way to influence what is rendered on the screen. And that is the state of the component. Let's quickly review what you've learned about props and make a comparison by learning about state. After that, let's dive into an example to get a better understanding of how state works in React components. Let's take a look at the comparison first. The first one is that props get passed to the component whereas state is managed within the component. Analogy for this would be function parameters against variables declared within the function body. Because a parent usually passes down the props to the child component, props are immutable. The parent owns the props and cannot be changed by the children. State on the other hand is managed within the component and hence the component has full control to change the state. In functional components, props can be accessed using the props parameter. And in class components, props can be accessed using this dot props. State on the other hand can be accessed using the use state hook in functional components and this dot state in class components. Again, as of this recording, hooks are a new feature in React. When you start on existing projects at your work, you are more likely to encounter class components and the state object rather than the use state hook. So it is essential you have a good understanding of state in class components. Well, that is the comparison between props and state in React components. Ultimately, both props and state hold information that influences the UI in the browser. All right, with this understanding, let's take a look at an example on how state can be used in class components. I'm going to go back to VS Code and I'm going to start off by creating a new file called message.js. So within the components folder, message.js. Within the file, I'm going to create a class component. Let me copy paste the code from welcome.js and make the necessary modifications. I'm going to change the class name to message and I will be exporting the same. Export default message. And the JSX, I am simply going to return the text welcome visitor. Now let me include the component in app.js. So the message component and make sure to import the message component as well. Now if you save the file and take a look at the browser, you should be able to see the text welcome visitor. Now here is our new requirement. We need to have a subscribe button right below the text. And when we click on the button, the text being displayed should change from welcome visitor to thank you for subscribing. Now, if the message were to be sent from app.js as a property, it will not work as props are immutable. Once the message is set to welcome visitor, it can never be changed from the message component. And so the solution is to use component state. Let's see what are the steps involved. The first step is to create a state object and initialize it. And this step is usually done inside the class constructor. So constructor and within the constructor, we call the super method. This is required because we extend React's component class and a call has to be made to the base class constructor. 
and then we create our state object. This dot state is equal to an empty object for now. Remember, we are inside a class, so don't forget to use the this keyword. State, by the way, is kind of like a reserved keyword in React. When you declare this dot state, React understands your intention. So we created the state object. Let's go ahead and initialize a property. I'm going to call it message and the value is going to be welcome visitor. Now the second step is to bind this state value in the render function. And we do this very similar to props. Instead of this dot props, we simply use this dot state. So in the return statement, within curly braces, this dot state dot message. If you now take a look at the browser, you should see no change whatsoever in the user interface. But because we are now using state to render the message, we now have the ability to change this message. So let's create a button and on click of that button, change the message. Step three, add HTML for a button element. Before we do that though, we need to add parentheses to the return statement and also create an enclosing div tag. The parentheses is required because the JSX spans over multiple lines now and we need an enclosing div tag because React wants only one element returned. Now let me move the message inside the div tag and also add the button HTML. button with the text subscribe. Let's quickly take a look at the browser and you can see that it works. The button is placed right below the message. The fourth and final step is to listen to the click event on this button and change the message. We will take a detailed look at event handling in React in the upcoming videos, but this will be a glimpse into how a click event is handled on an element. If it seems confusing, try to understand what is happening and forget about the syntax and the details. We will come back to that in a video or two. So back in Visual Studio Code, on the button element, we add the onClick attribute. Very important that the event is camel cased, C in uppercase. To the event, we assign a handler. And this is again going to be within curly braces. We're going to have an arrow function. So parentheses, fat arrow syntax, and a handler called this dot change message. Now let's define this method. So right after the constructor and before the render function, change message, and within the body, to change the state of the component, we need to call the setState method. So this dot setState. This method accepts an object, which is nothing but the new state of the component. In the new state, all we need is the message to be thank you for subscribing. So let's add that. So we listen to the click event and execute the change message method. Don't worry about how this arrow function works as of this video. Focus on the setState method instead. This is the method you need to call to alter the state of a class component. If you save the file and take a look at the browser, you should see the text welcome visitor and when I click on the subscribe button, the text changes to thank you for subscribing. This example demonstrates what exactly state is in React. A state is nothing but an object that is privately maintained inside a component. A state can influence what is rendered in the browser. And lastly, 
state can be changed within the component. All right, now I hope you have a slightly better understanding of props, state, and how they're used in React. We also had a quick look at the setState method, which is used to set the state in a class component. Although it looks fairly straightforward, there is much more to set state than what we have seen. Let's take a more detailed look in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications. I'll see you guys in the next one.